not my idea. This was my girlfriend's idea. She told me that I was obligated to tell you all that. But we're going to be looking at some retro sports logos. That are some of my favorite retro logos that I think
2002. It's still basically the same logo, except for they don't have the three colors back there anymore. Um, so it's not a massive difference, but I just, I like the more colorful look for the Spurs. They've been doing that, like, black and silver gray look for quite a while now. And personally, I, I think bring more color into it, into the the branding, especially now they have Wemp and Yama, you know, bring back the tricolor look with these. Um, and they have obviously being the Spurs, they have so many good memories with this logo. They won their franchise first NBA championship in 1998 and 99 season. And then they won in the 2002 to 2003 season. They made the conference finals six times while they had this logo. And some notable players were David Robinson. Tim Duncan, who was drafted in 97, so right at the tail end of this logo. And, um, Sean Elliott and Avery Johnson. Now, in my opinion, one of the biggest mis branding mistakes a team has ever made in the NBA. Moving away from this particular logo, we have the Toronto Raptors. The iconic Raptor dribbling the basketball logo that they had from 1995 until 2008. In my opinion, their logo now is just way too bland. It doesn't really say Raptor in any way. I know there's the claw marks, but the dribbling Raptor, I don't know why they ever went away from this. You could easily modernize this, make it look better. But, like, for some reason, they wanted to distance the fact that they were named after a dinosaur, it feels like. And I love, plus, the color combination, the purple, that silver, and the red. And plus, you know, the, they made their first playoff appearance while they had this logo in 1999. They made the Eastern Semi-Finals in 2000-2001. Vince Carter won Rookie of the Year wearing this logo. Not to mention, like, he had so many, you know, career highlights with the Toronto Raptors, even though I know there's some bad blood there now. Damon Stoudemire and Chris Bosch are also some iconic players that uh, were in Toronto during the time they had this logo. Next up, the Detroit Pistons from 1996 until 2001. They only had this for five years. And I, I absolutely love this. You have the big, like, exhaust pipes coming off of the S's. You have the horse with the fire for a mane. This is one of the best MB logos of all time, in my opinion. It's absolutely insane to me that they moved away from this. Especially to the modern Pistons logo, which is just so bland. It has, like, no real character to it. Now, they didn't really have any notable achievements while wearing this, but Grant Hill was probably the best player Detroit had while they had this logo. They also had Jerry Stackhouse and Lindsey Hunter. Now, if you're a child that was born in the 1990s like I was, maybe even the 80s, late 80s especially... This next logo will be iconic to you. This was one of the coolest teams in the 90s simply because of their color scheme in this logo. I'm talking about the Charlotte Hornets and their logo from 1988 until 2002. You have the Hornet dribbling the basketball. Both of my older brothers growing up had like those windbreakers. You know, that old, I don't know if you know, but those old 90s material windbreakers. They had Charlotte Hornet windbreakers. They had Charlotte Hornet starter jackets, hats. We lived in Portland, Oregon, right? Uh, so many kids back then were rocking with the Hornets because the logo was just super cool looking, very iconic. They made the Eastern Conference semifinals in 1992 to 1993. Larry Johnson won Rookie of the Year while they had this logo. They had Alonzo Mourning and the iconic Muggsy Bogues, the shortest player in NBA history. Okay, next up we go to the Cleveland Cavaliers 
Gosh, now I, this is way before my time, but I saw this logo here when I was looking through some old retro logos, and I feel like they need to do a throwback with this one. This is their logo from 1970 until 1983, and you have that red and yellow, which is honestly a great color scheme for Cleveland, which is weird because I usually, I've in the past harped on how I don't like the red and yellow color combination, but somehow it feels like Cleveland makes it work. And then you have the Cavalier there with his sword in front of the basketball. It's just a super dope look. They made their first playoff appearance in the 1975 to 76 season, so six years after debuting this logo. And some iconic players that wore this. I've honestly not heard of any of these guys, but Austin Carr, Campy Russell, and Jim Jones. And then we just showed you Cleveland, dude. We have to show you next, of course, the Golden State Warriors. This logo right here is amazing. I've always loved this. The Warrior, like holding the lightning bolt, which is kind of accenting the top of the word mark. The basketball behind him almost looks like the rising sun or something behind him. Like, this looks like something out of a Greek epic. In my opinion, this is the best logo the Warriors have ever had. I know, I think they've had a couple of throwback logos to this. But they wore this in the 1997 to 2010 NBA seasons. And, you know, even though they didn't have that much success during this time, I think a lot of Golden State fans look back very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot of Golden State fans really love this era of their basketball. Uh, they made the playoffs in 2006, 2007, and they beat the top-seeded Dallas Mavericks as the 8th seed, one of the biggest upsets in NBA playoff history. And yeah, some really fun, exciting players in Golden State when they had this logo, Antoine Jameson, Jason Richardson, Baron Davis. Um, this is like the Weebly Warriors era. This is like, this is just an iconic logo. And this is our final NBA logo. Um, so now we're going to go to the National Hockey League. I'm going to go to one of my favorite logos in any sport ever with the Vancouver Canucks. Their skate logo that they had from 1978 until 1997. Now I actually like a ton of the Canucks retro jerseys. I love their stick and rink logo. And I love their, um, I think he's called like Johnny Canuck or something with the dude skating. But I kind of made a rule for myself, only one logo per franchise. But I, I love this one especially because it's in colors that we now, in the modern day, don't associate with the Canucks, the red and the yellow. You have the ice skate plate spelling out Canucks. This is just such a great product of its time. Uh, and while they had this logo, they made the Stanley Cup final twice in 1981-82 season and in the 1993-1994 season. Some iconic players who wore this logo would be Stan Smile, Trevor Linden, and Pavel. This next one's going to be controversial. So, so, so many people absolutely hate this logo. But I have always loved this logo. And, uh, I've never understood the hate it got. So I'm just going to throw it out there. It is the Fisherman logo for the New York Islanders that they wore between 1995 and 1990. Seven. I know this gets so much hate, they only had it for two years, but I love it. There's just something, like, so campy about this. I can't help but love it. They never made the playoffs in the, the short span. They had this logo, but 
Lewis, Warren by the Likes of Pat LaFontaine, Sigmund Palfi, and Travis Green. Now, this next one is definitely a logo I never was alive to see. It is the first logo in Los Angeles Kings history, but there is something about this that just... It just... It, I really like it. And that is the Los Angeles Kings logo from 1967 until 1975. I love the purple and gold color scheme. I much prefer that color scheme for the Los Angeles Kings uh, compared to their modern color scheme. I like it when they use the Lakers colors. I just think it, it's really cool. I love the detail on the crown. They didn't try to go minimalistic with it like they do now. You see the cross on the crown. You see all the jewels. It just looks very regal. It's very befitting of a team called the Kings. They had three playoff runs during the eight years they had this logo. And some notable players that wore this. I've never heard of these guys, but uh, Roji, Vashon, and oh, I've heard of this guy, Marcel Dion. Marcel Dion. Now we're talking hockey. You guys knew this logo was going to come up, and it's our last hockey logo I want to talk about. But it is the logo for the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. The one they had from 1993 until 2006. You have the duck goalie mask. You have the cross sticks. You have the teal blue backdrop. The duck's current logo is so bland and boring. I don't. They don't need to go back to this, but I sure wish they would. I wish they'd bring back the mighty ducks name. This logo is just absolutely iconic. I understand why they've wanted to distance themselves from this. You know, because it's like a oh, Disney team, whatever. Especially like modern day social media. The chirping would be wild, you know. But man, oh man, I absolutely love this. Uh, they made their first playoffs in franchise history while they had this logo in the 1996-1997 season. They made the Stanley Cup Finals with this logo in 2002-2003 season. They lost to the New Jersey Devils in seven games. And you have some iconic players who wore this logo. Paul Correa, Timo Solane, Steve Russian Russian. Just an absolutely fantastic logo. And like I said, that is our final... Um, NHL logo. Now we move into the NFL. The first one I want to talk about, probably one of my favorite sports logos ever. Well, all three of these, there's only three, but these are all bangers, honestly. The Miami Dolphins from 1974 to 1989. I love this. You have the dolphin with the helmet on. The dolphin has like an eye that looks like kind of psychotic. You have the sun behind the dolphin. It's like very stylized. I absolutely love this logo. Um, the dolphins made two Super Bowls while wearing this. Um, Super Bowl 17, which was a loss to Washington. And Super Bowl 19 which was a loss to San Francisco. Some notable players that wore this were Bob Grease, Larry Sanka, and of course, my favorite player of all time, Dan Marino. Iconic logo. Now, this next one, I've said this about a few things, but this one, the more I think about it, this really might be the best sports logo in the history of sports. Definitely top three. And that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from 1976 to 1986. This dude is iconic. You have the Buccaneer. He's winking at you. He has a dagger in his mouth. He has like a nicely manicured mustache. He has a hoop earring, a feather in his cap. Like this dude is 
actively seducing anybody who looks at him, and I have to say he's quite successful in his pursuits. The, I mean, maybe the team had to go away from this because, like, you know, they, they're, they couldn't handle it, but this is just the artistry that went into this logo, the skills that went into making this, drawing this, designing this. I feel like it's not being, that that level of care is not being put into modern day logos, uh, now that we're moving into this minimalist design, it almost feels like nowadays they're trying to take the art, the design out of the sports logos, they're trying to make it a brand more than anything, which like I get it, but I love having this look, this is like a, this is a, an artwork that they just happen to wear on their jersey. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers never made the playoffs while they had this logo, but some um, some notable players who wore this include Lee Roy, Selman, Doug Williams, and James Wilder. And the last retro logo that I really love here in the NFL that I want to talk about. Um, and this is one close to my heart as a fan of the team, the Seattle Seahawks logo from 1976 until 2001. If I'm not mistaken, this is directly uh, inspired by a carving on a uh, totem pole found in the Puget Sound area in Washington State. Um, the name was inspired by that as well as the carving, or excuse me, the logo. So I love that connection, and you know, the, the modern Seahawk logo, like it looks very angry and aggressive, but this one has a sort of je ne sais quoi that the modern logo lacks, uh, and the Seahawks saw some really good success while wearing this logo. They went to the AFC Championship in 1983, 1984, and 1987 while wearing this falling short each time of making the Super Bowl, but the greatest wide receiver in franchise history broke or, or set all of his franchise records, which still stand, while wearing this, and that's Steve Largent, and you also have Cortez Kennedy and Sean Alexander who were wearing this. Now we move to the world of Major League Baseball, I only have two here. I know there's a lot more um, that I could have dug into here, but I just, these are the two that really have always stood out to me. I've loved these logos for a long time. First one is going to be very reminiscent of that Tampa Bay logo. It is the Pittsburgh Pirates logo from 1967 to 1986. Dude has a smile again. He got a hoop earring. This guy definitely not as handsome as the Buccaneer, but this looks like a guy that's gonna jump on your ship and steal your cargo. You know what I'm saying? This is a legitimate pirate. And even at this point, you have the iconic uh, font. Look, if you look at the P there on the pirates, that's the P they use today. So I really love that. And, um, Pittsburgh Pirates won their two most recent World Series while wearing this logo. Their World Series win in 1971 against the Orioles, as well as their win in 1979 also against the Orioles. And some iconic dudes wore this logo, most notably Roberto Clemente. Starkel and Dave Parker. And now our next and final team in the MLB, the Detroit Tigers from 1964 until 1993. I know some people make fun of this. They say like the tiger looks scared or something like that. It's not as bad as their previous logo, but there's something about this one. It's just so charming, like, yes, the tiger does look a little bit 
surprised, but I don't know, there's just something so charming about this, and um, again, similar to the Pirates, the last two World Series that the Detroit Tigers won, they won while wearing this logo. Their World Series win in 1968 against the Cardinals, and in 1984 against the Padres. Some notable players who wore this were Al Kaline, Willie Horton, and Alan Trammell. We're moving now to the wide world of college sports, and for their achievements I went and I looked at the, the sports that these colleges are most known for, most successful at. Um, but really it's more about the logo than anything else, starting with Tulane. Look at this surfing pelican. Are you kidding me with this? This is apps. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. That pelican is having the time of its life. Tulane wore this from 1920 to 1924, so well before my time. We're talking pre-World War II here. Um, this is when Tulane football first started to become a force in the southern United States. And some notable players that wore this were Red Dawson, Joe Steffi, and Claude Simons. And Tulane also had their 1925 undefeated season while wearing this logo. I love this. I love this so much. You have no idea. And next up, Alabama. I never knew Alabama had an elephant, like, mascot logo thing. And the elephant used to be all over their logo until, like, the 2000s. This is Alabama's logo from 1974 until 2000. And I absolutely love this. You have the big A there, the crimson dyed. But I love the way the elephant is, like, coming through the A. And just the detail, the level of detail in the elephant looks so good. Like, imagine wearing a Letterman jacket that had this on the front. You'd feel so cool. Um... Like I said, Alabama's most known for football. They won the national title in 1978 and 1992 while wearing this logo. So this is before their recent, like, total domination. But they were still obviously a very good team. And some really, really iconic players wore this, most notably Joe Namath. And also Cornelius Bennett and Derek Thomas. And now let's talk about this one is more my time. This is one that changed, like, that I can remember changing, and I dislike that they changed it. And that's Arizona State University, this Sun Devil logo. I absolutely love this, the look on his face. Like, dude just looks mischievous. He has those little beard hairs. He's grinning like he's up to no good. And he's happy about it. Arizona State wore, uh, wore this logo from 1980 until 2010. And actually, I didn't know this, but Arizona State's most successful sport is baseball. So talking about their baseball stats while wearing this logo, they won the College World Series in both 1981 and 1987. And do you want to talk about some iconic players that wore this logo? Alba Barry Bonds, who many people consider to be the greatest baseball player of all time. Barry Bonds wore this. Dustin Pedroia and Mike Leake. Okay, now we come to our final uh, college, and that is the University of Connecticut. And specifically, the University of Connecticut's logo from 1982 until 1995. They had this logo here with the husky. It looks very friendly now. They had some real bad husky logos before this. But this one is just... I love the little tongue sticking out. Like, it looks like it's happy to see you. It's just so funny because there's like an end to this now. 
on his teams have like an animal logo trying to make it look like mean or like aggressive and this just looks like a dog that you'd want to go up and give pets to uh, Yukon's most successful sport is basketball so while they had this um, logo Yukon's women's team won their first national title in 1995 establishing the dynasty of Yukon's women's basketball and some iconic women who wore this logo were Rebecca Lobo, Jennifer Rizzotti, and Kara Walters and for men Ray Allen wore this, Chris Smith and Danielle Marshall now we move to the world of soccer or European football first up this one I had never seen before until today when I was doing some research AC Milan's logo from 1981 to 1987 this is fantastic you have the devil there but it's like in these three sections and you have like his face body and his tail it's all very legible but still like minimalistic and it's just such an interesting look like I can't believe they only wore this for six years and it's really cool uh, they won the Serie A title in 1987-88 so right at the tail end of this logo and some iconic players who wore this are Franco Baresi, Paolo Rossi, and Ray Wilkins next up we have Roma's logo from 1979 to 1997 now I know they did a throwback to this on this year's kits but I don't think they're changing the current badge to this although I like this badge so much better than their current one uh, they had several second and third place finishes while they wore this but never won the league and never won any European uh, championships while they had this logo. But some uh, some iconic players who wore this were Bruno Conti, Francesco Dotti, and Giuseppe Gian Giuseppe Giannini. Excuse me. Now this one, this next one is a huge width of time on it. And that is Ajax's logo from 1928 to 1991. Now, they still basically use this, but they have massively simplified it. And but look how detailed this is, the, the level of detail and artistry again. Like, this is a piece of artwork that just so happens to be a sports logo. And they wore this for... What, uh, 70, 63 years, right? And they had so much success while wearing this, obviously. They won 21 Eredivisie titles. They won the European Cup in 1971, 1972, and 1973 while wearing this. And they won the UEFA Cup in 1987. And some very iconic players have worn this. Of course, Johan Cruyff, and then Marco van Basten, and Frank Ricard. There's another one, I have to admit, I, didn't, I did not see until today, but as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it, and that is the Arsenal 1994-1996 logo. This is so intricate. You have, like, the, the gunners up there, right? And an arsenal and that sort of script font. The cannon, but it's very detailed and intricate. The coat of arms, the saying. Like, the level of detail that went to this badge is nuts. And they only wore this for two years. And, you know, and over time, their badge became simpler and simpler until you get what you have to do. I love the level of detail in this. Um, during this time frame, they finished 4th and 5th in the league. They won the UEFA Cup winner 
Jersey Cup in 1994, and Ian Wright, Dennis Bergkamp, and Tony Adams wore this badge. Our second to last logo for today is the Swansea City logo from 1993 to 1998. I absolutely love this. You just see the bird up on We've all seen like geese do that, right? Right before they come run after you. Now, there's another version of this which is basically the same but has these black stripes. But I personally prefer it without the stripes. You kind of have the ocean and the waves going out there. I think it's a better look. Um, now, but Swansea did not have much success while they wore this. They basically only were down in the third and second divisions of English football, which would now be the modern League 2 and League 1. And I couldn't really find any notable players for them during this time. Uh, but hey, I would love to see them use this logo again, even though they might not have good history attached to it. And finally, we have Nats. Nats Football Club. I think that's how you pronounce that. I absolutely love this. Uh, you have the ship there in the back, the, the yellow and green waves of the ocean, the footballs there, and it just, this is, there's something about this that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. They wore this from 1968 to 1973, so only five years there, but they did win the league right at the tail end of this before changing logos. They won the league in 72, 73. And Andre Michael and Felipe Gondet were some iconic players I found who wore this logo. So, that is all for today. I, had, I found 27 of them. I, you know, this is by no means an exhaustive list. I definitely could have kept going and I might do a part two at some point in the future. Who knows? But, uh, let me know what you thought of these badges. If you'd like to see any of these make a comeback, if there's any of these that uh, you hadn't seen before that you like, or if you dislike any of these, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content. Just like this almost every single day. Till next time, guys.